still you got two days to do anything you want in that time if you want to do anything at all you know um yeah like oh god um like i said chatting with marvin and <clears throat> what's her name Flump to bump thing working out some more clear cut strategies for protection for the kids. I don't even know how old the kids are at this point. How old are they all now? Doesn't matter. Uh, well, Buckthorn grew up overnight, so. <laughs> well, but he was the older one. He was the one that she was pregnant with before Fiverr got taken. The others were all born in the three years that they were back together here. So he's uh, five, six, seven years old then. Yeah. They did grow up so fast. Damn rabbit. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there's that. Um, I guess overseeing people she's got the the new troops or whoever like getting them situated answering questions from the villagers who saw all this murdering or justicing whatever um yeah just 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 general all right, like you know, there isn't really any problems going on. You know, they they pretty much crack down pretty hard on that. So so everyone's pretty much in line. But okay. so you won't really have too much trouble with any of that, or you won't have any trouble with that for a couple of days. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, or it might be forever. But I mean, <laughs> they'll come back, and you're not going to be having any trouble with it. That's just oh, what I'm saying. Cool, cool. So yeah, so. Yes, recovering from the trauma of everything that happened and, and yeah, settling into a, a, a new role. Nothing interesting. <laughs> All right. You guys have come hovering back into town, you know, the whole way, you know, day and night. You could still, you know, see the glow from over there. And, and then, you know, you'll land back down at, you know, you know, factory one or whatever you call it. And Bill and Fiverr will be there and Lockjaw and, and Tintin to to meet the ships and get Buckthorn and Stubbs back home. All right. You guys all land. You always get back to wherever it is you stay individually I guess do they need to go and talk well, is Escalion in town he is uh, he's still in town he's obviously getting ready to go out there's a lot of mo you know military activity in the town he ain't going out alone he's going out with half of the army Jekyll will go talk to him since he has to. So. Does Vil need to go with you? You can come along if you want. I will. Somehow Fiverr has become a house husband. <laughs> Apparently. And Buckthorn's going to be telling all of his siblings about his adventure. And then I was blind for three hours. You get, you know, you make it up there, you know, they'll let you go in. And of course he's, he's busy and stuff, but he, you know, he'll, he'll ask you what all you saw. Of course you would tell him, I'm assuming. I and then, figure he already got most of the data from Phil. And uh, uh, you knew you noticed when you were flying in, a, there were a whole lot of 
trains out in the bay and and up in the bay and they look like they're getting ready to go head out themselves you know but he does you know he wants to know you know you know what, what what's your long-term plans are you here to stay or are you getting ready to shove off because i gave you those two ships but it, you know <sighs> but you know it's, it's not like you haven't mentioned you know flying off before so not sure i haven't mentioned flying off to him <laughs> hey man Got a lot of people working in those shops now, you know. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of helpers. We'll have to start calling those then. And there's even a lot more of them, you know. But well, frankly, Escalion, I mean, from everything Vil told me, it almost seems like you took unilateral control of everything during this crackdown. And honestly, treated her moderately poorly. No explanation. Dragged to you, put in chains in court or in a cell. I don't seem to give you a leader that I want to follow. Especially after just sending us on a mission to scout on your behalf. You had to have known you were going to do that. The, you know, what, two days after we left, you round up my allies? Now, you know, he rounded up all, all of them, everybody that was on the council. And it's for their own protection. That's one small slope over into tyranny is Gilead can't be a tyrant if you're a king. They can be one and the same. I don't know what my plans are at the moment. I'll have to talk with my people. Did you have something for me? Well, if you're, you know, if your people are still, you know, looking for the mercenary business, then yeah. You know, but if you need to go talk to your people and, then, you know, see if you want to, you know, leave, that's fine too. I'm not holding you here. Whatever job you may have is something I could present at the same time. Well, like I said, I have multiple jobs. I still need to know what's going off in the, the east. And now, you know. <laughs> Three was... large clouds that I'm not flying into. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the southeast. He means more along the Triber Road and towards the Sunless Citadel, all that area. All right, well, we know about that. <laughs> and, you know, he needs to bring Obaha to justice for, you know, what she's done, and she's fled into the swamp. And he's... he's, he's, he's that black dragon. <clears throat> well, you know, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I, you know, I, I need to bring her to justice, dead or alive, you know, preferably alive so she could be you know, put, you know, put the judgment before the people. But, uh, you know, he needs that done and he's separate. You know, he tells you, you know, right now I'm, I'm separating my armies. I'm going north along the road myself, but I'm on foot. So it'll take me days to do what you could do. And well, it'll take me weeks to do what you can do in days as far as scouting out. And, uh, and he's, he's sending parts of his Navy back out into the, uh, you know, either to Maconas to other parts, but so just just the scout missions then. Well, once into the uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't. You'd have to do it on foot and in the salt marsh. You know, send who you will, anybody you you trust. You know, and uh, but as far as the one going east, you'd probably have to take the balloon for that. You know, far east. Right, right. Well, I... And then beyond that, 
you know, in a day or so, I feel certain I'll be able to locate this blue man, and then we're going to move on him. How dare he co-opt the colors of my Konos? Literally blue or figuratively blue? Emotionally blue? We don't have those details yet. Mm. <laughs> don't don't know. know. He's got the, the like that jump bag. All those big barrels, they're all painted blue. They hit on him real hard, you know? <laughs> also, you, yeah, Skillion, you're bringing back the the practice of slavery to the Sword Coast. <laughs> slavery's always been in the Sword Coast, but to him, slavery's just normal. That's how it is, you know. Well, I mean, it's the way it is slavery. in Theros, but you know, it's the way it is everywhere. Yeah, you know? <laughs> slavery is, I think, abolished on the Sword Coast, but in this version, it can not be. All right. Well, uh, you know. Also, <laughs> summary executions without trial. They were guilty. <laughs> I know they were guilty because Angelica calls Sona truth. Yeah, I'm just gonna like not hide any of my emotions behind my disdain for all of his actions. <laughs> we'll be in touch, Escalia. If that's all, I'm, I'm going to back away. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, he's leaving in the morning, though. Well, you know, I'm sure that he'll leave someone in charge for mercenary. <laughs> he will. Asks. I'm going back to the, you know, whatever our stronghold is here in, in town. Well, you know, I guess that would be your factory. I'm assuming you kind of sleep at the factory. I don't really know. There's no reason not to. It's where all my work is at. Alright, we'll get back to the your factory. Bed, your, your bed's probably there now, I would imagine. I don't see any reason why I wouldn't just sleep on the airships. You know, in my cabin in the airship. All right, so we get back to the t inn over in that part. I'll call everybody in and, you know, be like, well, I thought Eskilion was a better leader than this, and <laughs> I'm not sure I want to hang out here. Okay, we still have one of our airships. What's everyone else's feelings in regards to this? Fiverr, Phil, you have many children that are, you know, to, to think of. My understanding is the council was to indirect, you know, cause of, of actually all the suffering and war that's happening now. Uh, that's what we were told. There was no council... You know, he didn't call a group of the counselors he could trust in to witness the zone of truth or anything. As far as we know, he could be lying to us. Not to mention, <laughs> frankly, Jekyll's a little against forced slavery and servitude, having been captured and forced into captivity himself. You are experimented upon. Not to mention, also, the summary executions without doing any type of public discourse. You know, no reason they couldn't have held off that zone of truth till... <laughs> You know, at least our representative was there. The whole point of a representative is so that we all feel like we have voice. All oh, that that's just stripped away. Um, I mean, my understanding is there's three other council members that are still alive. I'm sure they witnessed this. I don't know, Phil. You said they were... In... Were they there guarded like you were? Which three? 
it was there was me, Anders, Anders and, and Gillian, Jillian, mm-hmm. Jillian, the other three, two, three, two. There Druid. were just there were two with you. Yeah, there were not yet, but the other two are still missing. Yeah, we're just talking about the two that were there okay. with you. Yes, the 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 all three of us were Im- imprisoned with no explanation. Well, they gave you an explanation <laughs> after <laughs> they released us. Well, my my question stands. I'm not there to vote, so that's up to you guys. I am talking to them, not <laughs> not you. Yeah, I. I actually texted Lawrence and asked him what he going to do. <laughs> Assuming he can even talk. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't know enough about. Any thing <laughs> as 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 a person, not as Vil. The 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 things that are and are not normal or not, and there's you know keeping the family safe. I don't know how. I, how I mean, there's spe- distrust. There's spells, there's scrying that can be that can be done to find out truths and to find out. Um, things that have happened so if Skillion specifically sought out information from like the you know the fact that the kobolds which Skillion was working on trying to forge some type of peaceful relations with the kobolds at that time and then I mean it'd be easy to just see the fact that they came with good intentions and were turned aback. But more directly to the situation, I feel like our trust was betrayed by all the actions that happened today, so I don't feel like I have safety for the people I'm in charge of. In yeah, I, see, I, I can't speak because I wasn't here when all the things that, that stuff was transpiring, so... Uh, follow. Oh, well, your character knew that he killed, like, well, he executed three council members and he executed, like, 14, 15 Prukani, and, you know. But, you know, everybody knows why he did it, you know, why he said he did it, so. Why he said he did it. And it's not even that harsh a punishment, honestly. for doing something they had all the rights to do as as counselors before he was even part of this. Well, you know. You know. Uh, Sometimes, you know, know, if I could go go back in time and kill Hitler, I'd do it, you know. And I'd do it even if, like, you know, it was, you know, if he had been captured, I'd be like, you know, they would have executed him, you know? So. All I'm saying is that the council had power before in that there was a vote system in place with representation. If you make there a vote, is. if you make a vote tomorrow and then Esquilion decides he doesn't like it, he's got all the power and he's shown that he is not willing to, you know, agree with previous legitimacy. He could execute you on the spot. He's already proven he'll do it. I'm just saying, it's how the medieval world worked. I mean, you know. Well, in the medieval world, I'm getting on my boot and leaving. Because <laughs> this guy is unstable. Normal. <laughs> but I get what you're saying, you know. No. You're, 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 you're a cosmopolitan modern man, and you're not wanting to, like, you know. He was operating in an environment with representation, and then unilaterally sliced half of it away. <laughs> it's how Greek democracy worked. 
Yeah. Or the yes, Nash. I'm not sure I understand the backstory, like what was so bad. Nothing was bad about it. It's just something he disagreed on a personal level with. Well, you know, their decision cost thousands of lives, you know, and he wasn't, you know, that's but the like, end of it. did they, like, was it done maliciously? Or it's just like hindsight's twenty twenty. He seems to think so, but, you know, at the same time, he, he just told you what he was doing and why he did it, but he didn't go into a lot of details on it, so there may be things he knows that he just didn't feel like he needed to, you know, be privy to even tell you, you know? Yeah, the, the council's made a lot of bad decisions that have pushed the, this area into the Tormel. Well, it's, there, it's, there's a yeah. reason the Founding Fathers did not want to have a democracy. And, you know, and same thing in Greece. You know, the city-state was, it was amazing, but it was also terrible. <laughs> it caused a lot of deaths. Well, all right. As the functioning members of the Stormcrow leadership here, and since I don't run a, you know, y'all all have a voice, I'm voting that we send representatives to Neverwinter to see if they would be, you know, to see what state the city's in. And then we mass exodus the Stormcrows to Neverwinter and work out of there. We can even come down and do jobs for Eskelion, but I don't feel safe under his leadership. Yeah. Basically, we leave all of our families in his custody, and if one job we don't complete, one job we do, you know, that we choose not to take, he, you know, could be the end of them. There, there has been a lot of mob bosses that run that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you are applying twenty first, twenty second century logic on a, you know, fourteenth century environment, but at best, you know. Not really. I mean, if you, I'm part of a group. The, our group is supposed to have representation on a council. It still does. Our... Matter of fact, you even have more representation now because he made her a lord. But it's pseudo. It's 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 ephemeral. We had representation before, and it was stripped away without any thought. So the, it promises are weak at this yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She I mean, actually. I, she I, was. I, she was actually imprisoned, and then she was brought out of prison. And says, "Well, I've learned that you are innocent. Would you well, like to be a was, lord?" <laughs> he presumed I was innocent, and I was still in prison. Well, that is how it works, even today. You know, if you're arrested, you are thrown into jail until they decide otherwise. I'm not saying I mean, go or stay. I, I'm just saying that's how it's actually done today. It's not I, done any different. I, it doesn't matter. In Jekyll's mind, he's in, you know, he's responsible for the lives of yeah. the Stormcrows. And, well. I, I would say for, for Vil, there's very much a responsibility for her family and for the, what, what how many Stormcrows are even left at this point? I have no idea. I, About 400 or so. And they're all here. Are they the they're people all that I'm representing, basically? I'm sorry, yes. what? Yes, they are. They the, are the, people. the people. Well, he get, technically just gave you all a down glyph, so. Yeah, but that's where all the storm crows are living. Yes, the storm so... crows are there, and then everybody else that was already there. Okay, so there's, so, th yeah, okay. I don't see the harm in actively looking for 
better options, I guess, for all of us. Um, but I don't know that, based on my experience as Bill and also me, <laughs> uh, no one seems to be very trustworthy. So I, I, there's no assumption that things are going to be better anywhere else. And there's the, the responsibility that she has placed on herself as well as l the literal responsibility of her role as the leader of this ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, uh, he had enough money to make it better. He made you the leader of a ghetto. <laughs> yeah, but these are our people. Like, so, and, and it's not Our just, ghetto people. Yeah. Not it's, to mention. It's not he, just the Storm Crows. It's the Storm he kinda Crows. He kind of already and... gave that over to me last time, so. Gave you what? <laughs> he gave me down cliff. <laughs> he gave you some factories. He told you to make stuff. He didn't make you a lord over down there. So this is what it is. You're jealous of her power. Now no, we see uh, why you're wanting to leave. I'm not jealous of power at all. I'm cautious of a man with such great power who bends with the wind so easily. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the hard part for me is because... Is it's not like I exactly liked anyone on the council either. They were all shitty people. So he, t he vote... literally just asked if you were staying or going. He's not making you stay. So no, I know. I well, I already agreed to this role, right? You did. So that's but... different than. I mean, I. Like I said before. But I if all if all the people leave you technically don't have that role anymore. Exactly. So I, my, my, like I said before, my thoughts are working, like building relations with Marvin and his ocean people, coming up with like, you know, like, like, uh, Like exit strategies for the family. He, he he can breathe on land and water, but you and your people can't. So no, no, th sorry, of, this is he'll help you two, in any way he yeah, can. No, but. two bullet points. Two bullet points. One is again continuing to forge forge this relationship with the sea community that seems to be living a happy life, because um, you never know when that's going to be useful coming up with strategies to protect our immediate family and make quick escapes or hiding if shit goes sideways. Researching long-term solutions that are better than our current situation, but for now, not just running. Um, Staying, being cautious, understanding that the, we can't trust anyone beyond our core group. And all right, Bill. So what I'm hearing is you want to stay. Yes. Okay. Because there, there are so many of us that there's no clean way to even make an escape. All right. Perfect. Well, Ruth, you, you don't. You know, there's not an escape that has to be made. You can just, if you can convince them to follow you, a la Moses or whatever, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, theoretically, you know, then you but could do again, that, you know? again, the guy is. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the stormtroopers still have enough ships and whatnot to actually, you know, peel and leave. Because we did have a lot of ships and we lost half our number, so. Uh, we've never really talked about that. Uh, you know, most of all of that is, you know, most of them <laughs> are gone. You do have some, but you ain't got enough for 500 people. Which you probably, 500 wouldn't all decide to go, but besides, you told them the storm crows was over, so. 
I did not say that. You said move down here, make a life for yourself, and you did, you know, but. And in Bill's case, it's more than just the Storm Crows anyway. I mean, I'll present that as another option. Let's just disband the Storm Crows, and we'll fly up to Neverwinter and work for Iskaleon from there. <laughs> I'm, I'm my understanding is that the, the rulers of um, Neverwinter are almost just as harsh, if not even harsher, than what is depicted in this region here. My understanding is, you know, they have all kinds of slavery, all types of, you know, critters and things are bound in, in, in servitude in, in that region. Yes, but not a human. Like, what he just candid Phil. Sorry, Scrad. Don't write this down. <laughs> <laughs> Slavery is in the Sword Coast. Sword, the, the company, who are really wizards of the coast, they don't like talking about it, but if you read their stuff, it's all throughout the Sword Coast, you know. Uh, even under, well, what is it, Waterdeep or whatever, you know, Tintin down there or whatever his name is, he's 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 a slaver, you know. Every all of those guys in the north, all those islands, all the people up in Neverwinter, all those tribes are all slavers. They capture each other just like the, they're Vikings. That's what they did, you know. It doesn't matter. Jekyll's not going to participate in it. So no, I get that. I'm just saying, it's oh, it's a thing, you know. It's, it's happening around us, although it hasn't been really happening in the salt marsh previously very much. I mean, it just, it, you guys right, sorry, don't I'm have any. Sorry, I'm trying to get us back to the role-playing element here. It Bruce, is, I mean. What is, your, what is your desires on this? I, I mean, that. That basically is, it was Bruce talking, and then I, I, I don't see that it would be a better option to go to this Neverwinter place where we have no idea what's going on in the region or area or, or have any concept or any allegiances to anyone there. The only thing we have done is we've asked for, you know, a semi truce with Neverwinter, but I don't think that we actually have any you know, pool. Here we have Bill technically on the council. Jekyll raises his eyebrows. And that appears to be what she wants. All right. Yeah, I mean, Jekyll, you are your own man. As, I think as much as you know, we 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 are all family. If you're genuine, you know, if you gotta go. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. This was a discussion to see where we wanted to take our group, the people that we care about, and I'm not the, okay. The thing is, I. Um, I mean, the whole goal and why we're here is to get an ultimate goal of getting revenge on the Nomograd. I mean, you, I looked at your plans in your, with your papers the other day when you thought I was, I didn't come in, and you were drawing up plans for the, the mountain base that was going to house the airships and everything. I saw you drawing those things. <sighs> You can't, you can't hide that from me. Had two, had two airships yesterday. Lost one already in this man's war. Uh, it was a notable bad situation. I don't know that that was even his war. It was a mission for him. Last so. year now. All right, well then. So, I mean, the ultimate goal is to go and establish, hopefully, maybe the Storm Crows into Gnome again, which we eliminate all the gnomes there. I understand. Which is, sounds like genocide that you're talking about doing, by the way. 
That's not too if, if you want to talk about gnome, There are other gnome colonies. This one's just evil. <clears throat> All right, so Eskelion has offered us two missions for the storm crows that could be done. He wants us to find a former counselor who has fled for her life and bring her back for summary execution. And in, he wants us to scout ahead of his army to the east to just get the lay of the land. What do y'all... <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm voting scout. <laughs> yeah, if there's a moral obligation to his a moral disagreement with do, do, his... do we do we know what his do, do we know what his plans are to, in this taking his army north do we even have an idea we were not offered that information the, we were offered a contract to scout i mean you don't i'm sorry bill i'm sorry for speaking above you but, but go, go go ahead oh i was just saying there's i mean i i feel like we're all in agreement that his method of bringing about justice is not one that we agree with. So if we were going to do either, it would be the scouting. But also, I don't know that we'd have to do, or you would have to do either of them. If you don't like him as a, he's, he's not your, your boss. Like, oh, well, no, no, but we we want to maintain good relations with him and make money for the storm crows so <laughs> we're going to take on one of these jobs i'm i'm putting for we'll, we'll go scout. <sighs> um i i whispered to Jack, well Jack, well jekyll quickly you know as, as i recall i i do believe you met justice on a dying man yourself I don't I'm not, I'm, that's, I'm not remembering what you're talking about <laughs> when you killed up what, what was it Daga or not Daga but the the storm crow commander guy or whatever oh him the, that Daga. was basically a ritual kill to you know gain control of the storm crows but I mean you did that kill <laughs> You, you did kill an unarmed man laying in his bed. I, I, I mean, when we're talking about... But that was the accepted social contract track that we were all part of. Just like the accepted social contract of the, the counselors was that they had a voice. I participated in the social contract of the Stormcrows. Yeah, I, I, was not, I was not privy T1, at that time as well. T1 has listened and not said anything but he has now spoken <laughs> and he says he will vote to uh, to leave with Jekyll because the engineers have to stay together and we can wage war on Gnome again whenever we feel we have the power to do so and that's a quote <laughs> <laughs> or a text I guess which I guess is a quote but <laughs> Oh, Lawrence texted you. Yeah, I've been texting him while y'all were talking, you know. And at first he was like, he was very wishy-washy. Oh, I don't know. Whatever the group says, I said, you can't. It's a vote. <laughs> you know, you can't ride on your vote. Well, maybe Democrat, but maybe Republican. Whatever the most votes get, you know. I don't want to be, you know. <laughs> you know. So, so finally, he decided he would just he would he would vote to leave because he trusts you because you gave him his freedom, his AI, you know. Well, we're still outvoted. <laughs> Three to two. <laughs> Three to two? Who's the third one? Fiverr. Oh, Fiverr sided with a pussy? God damn it. <laughs> he's, he's such a, what do you call that, soy boy? Caring and loving individual. <laughs> to be fair, Fiverr mm. hasn't spoken yet. So you don't know that he did. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
I was just going off everything else he's done so far. <laughs> you know, as far, far as you know, yes, making I mean, characters, does, you know, I mean, he does a great job. So, because he was on that airship once with all the kids ready to leave, and Bill overrode him. So, I think that's what we're all getting at when we say he's kind of pussy. But I only vaguely remember that that was very stressful. I was I was acting in fight or flight that whole scenario either way uh so so t1 decided he would go with you or the group he he wanted to go you know the, to both to leave uh, she has two votes because well, I, I wasn't gonna take well, two votes well actually you were never part of, were yeah you were part of the storm you were the last storm crow she was the last storm crow yeah, she was the last one. Okay, the last one that made it through the training. Yeah. She... So I didn't, I didn't really consider this a a storm crow vote as much as a. Oh, this is a party. upper echelon exactly. of the storm crow vote, and that is Fiverr, Bill, Ruth, Jekyll, T and T one. <laughs> That's all. I think Val Astro would have been, but he's dead. Fair enough. Oh, is he now? <laughs> well, sort of dead. <laughs> he's something. <laughs> you saw him at that midnight sword. Alright, so we're gonna load Okay, down. so that, that boat, you said there were a couple of boats, so that one in particular was just to pick up and leave. That was the whether or not we were going to pick up, leave, and try to go to um, Neverwinter. The first part of that would have just been to send people there to scout out the lay of the land and figure out the logistics of it. But yes. And then the other one, I, I thought you said you were going to vote to disband it all together and just. Oh, I presented that as an option. Nobody jumped at it. So uh, I, I still think, you know. Particularly for we're staying in the area, we should keep the Storm Crows as an active member of the society. And I agree. Push, push, pushing their strength to hopefully allow for us to get things that are more directed to our needs versus what Skillion has desired for us to do. I, I I agree. The if we wanted to move and be more free to just go about as we please, having you know, 500 less DNPCs would be behoove us. But since we're staying, we don't have to. Yeah, like, like I said, completely up to you guys. I mean, it's killing himself right. even asked you. He didn't tell you to do it. He just asked you and said, hey, if you stay, do these, you know. I am aware, and that's why I brought it back to the group to talk about. Well, now, Ruth did not go with you to... Um, when you were talking to Iskilion, should we go to, and talk to him again and ask him exactly what his army is doing and and how we could be of service in such a scouting mission? Because I well, think we, I think we should, information is what he wants. You know? I think we should get more information from him of what's going on, because you know, at least a way for us to communicate with him or move or meet up with him, like his march route, so we could try and find him. Yeah, yeah, that what you're saying? yeah, that's what I'm saying. Having some type of okay. tie with him, or possibly maybe <laughs> a pair, pair of sending stones would be awesome. I I understand and I agree. Um, so we're all in favor. We're going to take the scouting mission and hope we don't get hit by more nukes. I <laughs> you didn't get hit by that one. You just got kind of buffeted it a little bit. I consider being in the area of effect of the blast getting hit. I looked it up, man. It, it winds go out for a long ways. I agree. Like, like miles waves. and miles and miles. And I don't disagree. <laughs> so, and that's just for like you know, I figure you know, one megaton, you know, something like that. All right. So, and who has the power of a backpack? Freaking new. Skaven. Uh, all right, Ruth, let's go. 
right. Phil, in the meantime, while we're doing this, I need you to gather workers from the Stormcrow and get builders beginning a wall across the cliff and the sea and down cliff. Can you do that? So build a wall there? We are building a wall. Who's going to pay for Decre it? Decrease we are... Is it here? It's in salt marsh i'm looking for the map i'll show you i just, right. I just drew one here well that's a big ass cliff already no no that's the that's a cliff so we're gonna build a wall right here i don't know where down cliff ends uncle sean but you know you get my point it's... yeah yeah i get your okay. point that's pretty much it so that's what we're doing <laughs> it's wall to the cliff yeah, okay. Putting a gate on the main road. Done. Is this going to raise concerns? It shouldn't. You have control of this land. He gave it to you. Okay, okay. Also, it's Skillion's soldiers, and you can tell their leader that he's welcome to have a barracks in his leader's part of the city. Cool, 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 cool. Say what? What did you just say? I said, asked, uh, I didn't say, I asked Vil to begin construction and to tell the platoon leader of those 60 soldiers that they can get a barracks in Salt Marsh. Well, there's going to be one down here. <laughs> you know, they've already started building it. We're stopping it, and unless he tells us we can't. We're stopping it? Well, she is the Lord, but she has to swear filthy to him, so. So she doesn't have control over Downcliff then? She does, but I mean, she has control over those soldiers. He, he gave them to her as I, her. Yeah, you know. I told him to build a thing. Mm, he he kind of said they were doing it. I am saying that we don't want 60 Salt Marsh Eskillion loyal soldiers inside of Downcliff and the the storm grows territory. I am willing to listen to arguments to the contrary. I just, I don't know that we have that kind of power. This is all just one big city, right? Like I'm, I'm like the. You're a district leader I guess I yeah so I mean I have you're limited actually... control I mainly represent the people for on the council it's not like this is a little city inside of a country where I can just you, do whatever I want you would be con in close uh, you would be considered baroness and you are required to take care of all them people make sure they're fed all that good nonsense oh, yeah. pay their taxes which is technically your taxes uh they answer to you and you answer to him those 60 men he gave you was just to help you keep those people in line you know uh now whether or not you trust them i mean that, that's that's you guys or whatever but uh yeah i mean that that's how it works it's a okay. feudal system okay, you well. know and you're technically as a you know what we would call it a baroness in the later centuries you know yeah. uh you're actually on the very lowest ring of royalty. Nice. So oh. I'm well. I <laughs> she's like Myers just burped it up. Cool. We're gonna stay here then. I'm fucking no. Uh, I'm royal. Yeah. What? You better call me Lady Vil. Um, Lady Vil. Well, why don't? And we they just... will. That is actually would be your title. I mean, what if what if we just did brought the the wall in. A tickle? <laughs> I'm looking and at I'm looking at the Feywild. It's really not nuked. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah, it got it got scorched. Like it if, was a cool swap out. If we did a like we did it here, and then these are the barracks. You totally could do that. 
it's up to you. And so they're I on. Mean, they're it's, on. It's literally up to you. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just we'll just do that. At your command, Lady Bill. And because see, the cliff gets shorter here, so it would we'd have to get a wall. You know, here it's high enough that this is sort of its own protection. Oh, look at the little cute corpse lancer ship. Yeah, it's spread all over a mountainside at the moment. Alright. Ruth, we're going to do that. Andy. Yeah, we want to go talk to Excalibur. I he you know, he they're setting out in the morning, but you you did you'd have time to catch them before they leave. You know? I I don't know what you wanted to say to him, but we're on the same page, Ruth, if you wanna take care of uh, uh, well, well um the storm crews have decided to honor your your request for for a scouting ship. We would like to have um some other types of um ways and means to possibly be able to communicate with your column and be able to provide information and, and touch about are do you happen to have any like maybe sending stones or anything that could could benefit in this nature what's your mage's name well, this, uh, is, uh, this is ruth <laughs> this, is, this is ruth talking i know it is but what's your mage's name Uh, hang on, Granny's calling. Okay, Granny's calling. <laughs> All right, so we are going to begin fortifying Down Cliff. <laughs> to be fair, having archers on the cliff shooting down at us would be bad, but <laughs> but the point is, we're making a show of force. Trying to get us all killed. Making a visible show of distrust. Since he didn't feel the need to nicely walk into another faction's territory. He came in for 60 soldiers. Hey man, you got the protector, you know. A lot of a lot of people are angry. Fuck, I bet the whole city's almost in revolt. That's probably pretty common, actually. What happened? Maybe for some of them, but not the the dock leader. She's is well this... loved in the Salt Marsh. Yes, but you know. Is this blue dot your warehouse? No. No, I I don't. It's just left over from. Okay. These somewhere. are your warehouses <laughs> over here, right? Um, actually, I think they were up here further, unless I was wrong. Aren't they this one and this one? Yeah, that's that's supposed to be a big area of warehouses and a couple of docks out there. Oh, okay. Oh, although, really, one of those should be a, a unloading plane for ships, but... <laughs> well, then let's just do... I mean, that's one. a really big building. And, and, you know, you could easily put yeah. them both in there. Well, this will be... This one building will be it. And, you know, they okay. drop anchor down into the water off the coast occasionally, I guess. I mean, can you imagine it? 50 years from now, there will be bunny hall holes all through this cliff face. We'll have a population of, like, 50,000. <laughs> all them inbred bunnies. How do you spell Barrett? A-C-K? B-A-R-R-A-C-K-S. Where does this go? I, I want to assume this is, like, basically impassable. That? It's just the coast down there. Going south, you know? That was my thoughts of... That was my potential escape route. Well, then, we need to build a gate there and a watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> Match, like, you might have the name of Lord or Lady, but I'm really in charge. <laughs> I'm your advisor. 
It is so hard to get text to line up where you want it to be. Might not want to put a whole lot of effort into that, because if you... All I do is put effort into things. That's how I stay entertained while you guys argue. I mean, discuss things. So, words should be the same direction as the rest of the words on the map. Then fix it yourself. Doing great. You're doing great, Matthew. Put a few somebody, more pipe here. Somebody there. blindfolded me. I didn't blindfold you. Did I? I somebody did. I didn't do it. Hell, I can't even. I don't even know how to do that off the top of my head. Did you I hit Control B? I could have, maybe. You must have hit Control B. I did that earlier. It was startling. And the fact that no one else reacted to it must mean that it just happens to you. Huh, it is Control B. Look at there. Oh, yeah. there you go. Uh -huh. Well, I, while I was typing, I hit that combination and. Yeah. No, I I did that. I was trying to paste something, and I hit Control B instead of V, and I was like, Oh no. <laughs> have you not seen my entire house that I have built? <laughs> Sean cannot well, just dispose of this table. Just when you make changes, make sure he knows so he can save the most recent version of the table. Oh, I know it. Every time I load it, like, your piece count has gone up. <laughs> I'm trying to organize my own stuff and save. I just, because I was wondering, like, I, I, I don't know how on earth I could ever save this whole structure. You'd have to combine them all into one with the... the the linking tool oh, it'd be so a nightmare annoying. yeah it would be awful i've done it with these little boxes that i've made like my safe room and the little tank but all this i just lock down This is why I wanted to get rid of those 500 DNPCs. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, because me not wanting to leave? No, no. I was making a joke. Because when you have DNPCs, and DNPCs mean dependent non-player characters, yeah. they, you have to roll, and sometimes they activate. And by, you know, that means one of them calls you, or... You know, they break down on the side of the road, and you have to go help. We have 500 of them <laughs> in this down yeah. cliff area. Yeah. I mean, you could still vote to disband the storm crows, and I they could no be reason. on their own or whatever, you know. And I would if we were leaving, but <clears throat> but we're not. So. Yeah, I I for, I didn't realize storm crows were still a thing. Now that, I mean, I I remember the conversation now, but I, I wasn't even taking that into consideration. I just think about I mean, they've lived here for however many years and have the family and they know their neighbors. Like They were a nomadic mercenary company. It's going to take a, more than three years to completely domesticate them. I'm not saying we're. De I'm just saying more things to consider when you're up and okay. going. I'm we not talking about the storm crows. I'm talking about Vil and Fiverr and the dogs and. I mean, they're all, the, the, the storm crows are going to cease to being a thing fairly quickly, anyways. We're not. Yeah. We're not making enough money. <laughs> To, to pay them all and we aren't managing contracts to send them out to do things to bring them back money so yeah I th like I said I thought they were 
who so yeah i did i yeah i didn't i didn't realize we were still dealing with them i mean you could do both missions if you want it just pick one you know we just aren't comfortable with Iskilion's methods. It's just day to day life, man. It can be for him. I'm not going to have spikings in my day to day life. We are we are attempting to transition from I don't know. I don't know what's next. <sighs> I just really want to hang out with Marvin some more. He's my favorite so far. With his little top hat. And his little... His little... Armor skull thing. He's the coolest. I keep trying. Nobody cares. Nobody listens. Just keep trying to bring him in. I'm like, I'm gonna hang out with Marvin. Y'all can be over there trying to save your air shit. Me and Marvin are having tea. He would love to have some tea. See? Have some tea in the sea. So yeah, so we're also like digging like escape tunnels like like there like there's <laughs> okay. one like going going into little the, moles yeah we're rabbits <laughs> like, humanoid rabbits yeah we're I digging get it. we live underground so there there's one yeah on this side of the the yeah on this one oh for the love of Don't be opening up entrances inside the walls. Oh, for the luck. Fine. Here. There's one there. And it, it pops up. I don't know. Somewhere else. Just so you know, if you wanted to go for, for your, uh, I guess, six level tunes or whatever. They're the ones that I was planning on you going after into the swamp, looking for her with, you know. I'm back. I figured as much, but I check Jekyll's not a trustworthy individual, and he feels betrayed. So he's not trustworthy. Or sorry, he's not a trusting individual. Oh, well, this is also Jekyll's not the one going into the swamp. I true, but I. You know, I, I put my vote on where I wanted to go, and everybody else said it was okay, so. <laughs> well, I just, I didn't know if you picked up on it, so I just said it, you know. So, but if you did, no, then I'm, I, and I feel I, good, you know. I, I'm back. What's up? Idaho. You were talking to. My mother. Skillion. Also, yes, your mother and <laughs> Skillion. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, R Ruth was um asking about, um, um, you know, you know, Jekyll here and I yeah, feel that, you know, the use of the blimp with assisting with your army would probably be to the greatest impact of our abilities currently. So we, we wish to volunteer to that nature and the, um, but we feel like, um, you know, we would need to know more of the plans of exactly what your goals are with your army, where we are going, um, um what type of speed and time frames are we planning on to be here and there um and then also the possibility of having some type of sending stones in order for us to communicate with one another the column you and ourselves within the slime sky ship uh, that's when i asked you what the name of your mage was uh, uh alfred byron <laughs> well this, this is my main he, mage he tells you you'll have to go speak to my you know you know, my mage, Alfred Byron. Because he works for me, you remember? <laughs> well, well, but he, yeah, that character doesn't have any type that, I don't have that, those magical items or have that ability to do. Well, 
you know, I don't know that. I'm a fighter. And he just bequeathed you like the old you know, magic user's place. That's where you live now. <laughs> and you're going to like, you know, write down and everything that that guy knew, all you're going to copy down all of his, uh, you know, scrolls, oh. et cetera. Damn straight. Hold and on. you're going to be doing all of that. And you're going to be like, you know, I couldn't trust that one, obviously. So I need another one. And you already told me you were working for me. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Alfred is beholden to a skillion. I can't. Well, I, I mean, the, 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 the cusp of me bringing this character, I mean, I'm, I haven't role played meeting Skillion or anything, but I want to make a, a great library. And, you know, I talked to Skillion that I already had my CODIS, and this area in this region doesn't have any type of library or anything. And <laughs> Greece is what, whatever was known for just great libraries and literature. So it'd be a, a perfect segue to get my character within the, the score, story or whatnot. You get me? Yeah, I get you. And, I'm just. And didn't your cat come over with a skeleton too? He came over as a hired deckhand. He doesn't. He's not beholden to a skeleton. He just used a skeleton as a way to the new land. Well, I, I, I am just now hearing that I was bequeathed a freaking maid's tower and stuff. I mean, this is new. Uh, it just came up today. <laughs> it's a new information well, right now. A couple days back, but yeah, you know. There's a vacancy. If you don't want to accept it, he's not going to force you to. Which Alfred would be jumping on somebody else's mage tower and the ability to actually <laughs> go through his spell books and stuff. Yeah, that'd be he'd be jumping on that. I mean, it's really like a really nice house, but you know, he has a wonderful carriage that is now yours as well. I think I remember that carriage. Okay. I don't That's judge you familiar. for wanting it. I just. And at odds with the leadership of this place now, and I don't know if I want you on my airship, because you could be a spy. You know, Jekyll, he's just harsh, man. I already was on your airship. I didn't know about this before. I didn't either until just now. I knew he was on there. Wait one second. Well, I knew he was on there. I didn't know about his... Very close ties to Askelia. Oh, I missed that part. I was up getting drinks. I, I, my niche to come was to build a library in this area. That's what I was what my goal. I feel you, but as is most times, the party needs a reason to be loyal to the party, and your loyalties lie elsewhere, and that scares me. I, 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 that, I mean, that's fine. You, would you like to talk to my sister? <laughs> or my cousin? I really like that character, oh. though. I just, DM, are you going to, are you going to make him a spy? I mean. <laughs> Why would you ask me that? And Why would I tell you if I did? Because, <laughs> but, I mean. Because if you don't tell me, I'm not going to let him play him. Well, that's just not how it works, brother. You know that. It is how it works, because I'm going to say, well, you can't come. And he no, can't come. you're using meta knowledge to make a decision in game. You know? No, I'm not. I'm going to be And I never brought up a spy at all. I never once said that. You know? I, I was literally in the presence of you saying, this guy is my new mage. It's not meta knowledge. That's I, I'm holding true to how I've been role playing all night. Hey man, it's up to you guys. Man. Like I said, I mean, I'm aware it's up to me. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, I yeah, Which I'm not the one because I really like that character. I just there needs to be a reason for him to be loyal to us. Well, wouldn't that be for him to decide? Well, yeah, but that's the, the basic building block of D&D. &D. We, we have to be able to be, rely on each other as a team. If I can't trust my teammates, then... 
Well, I I expected us to get sent on a mission and us to go role play together with your other characters and us to build some trust. I I know, but well, things. I mean, come on, direction. man. You played a long time with Lawrence. Is that really a statement that you could hold by? <laughs> I I have always role played him. My loyalty, I mean. I for God's okay. sakes, I saved him in a city where he was going to get executed. I know. That's why I was kind of upset earlier. I I had to beg him, basically, to cast his own spells that d d gave him. Well, I told him that while you were gone. Well, I'm glad you did, because it means it wasn't just me not understanding why he was No, doing I, I explained a lot of options while you were gone. I mean, he was he was the one that jumped at it. Remember, I said, y "You taking a guy?" He said, "Oh, I'm taking all three of them." You know, he wanted to take them because he wanted to have that power. Well, more importantly, he didn't want somebody not to miss EP. Is what he wanted. That's what he was thinking. I, I know him. think he was thinking that he needed to take Eric because we were going to play with Eric at some point, and he didn't want to not be able to play with Eric because he wasn't there. That's what I think. And T1 always goes with T. Well, T2 always goes with T1, and T1 had to go. So, I guess, like I said, there you guys could play them right now if you went on the other mission, but you don't want to do that, <laughs> you know, which is fine. I don't care. It's against, it's against, it's against what Jekyll believes. So, but is it against what the cat believes or whatever? Well, nobody's asked the cat's opinion. <laughs> The cat ain't got no that ain't no right yet. Cat don't get no opinion. He's just sitting in the corner, bitch. No, the cat's here and he says he he rolled into town and said, Hey, I've heard y'all have like airships. I wanna travel. I can't, I need work. He signed on as a deckhand, basically. There you go. He did, he did the exact same thing with a skillion to get here. That's all right. I mean I wasn't thinking about him being a spy it never crossed my mind to tell you the truth until you brought it up but but now but i i'm not i'm not the one that's like you know really nervous here you know oh that's because you're the dm it's the players that need to be nervous i've hit a point where i just assume bad things are gonna happen so i'm just going with it The world Hasn't really anything anything bad happened in a long time, so things things do happen in this world, that's for sure. Yeah, I I just I'm just going with it. Regardless, all right, we gotta get back to the focus. All right, I'm ready. Ruth has had this conversation and got told to go talk to somebody. Yeah, and, and I'm looking through spells. I I was just told that I have access to more spells and things so i'm looking through the spell list right now to see if it's a possibility to actually have that at my character level well you would be able to tell me because i don't look at mages because op but tell me <laughs> what well, I, I'm, I'm looking at spells right now I, I haven't found one yet well you're searching so he still has to scribe them and i could i can scribe a spell in two minutes Oh, that's fair. The scriber thing comes into help for that. The, uh... Alright, well, I guess Ruth and I are going to go talk to that dude at the Wizard's Tower. As, you know, it's not a problem. You can, you can go there or whatever. Uh, you know, it's where you're the same place you were before, you know, when he was there. Carriage is still sitting there. Guy's still sitting on it. <laughs> you know, it doesn't look like he's moved. You, you go in there, you knock on the door, a little helper will come out. You'll introduce you, he'll tell you you want to meet him. He'll call for Brad's character to come out and talk to you. And whatever y'all want to happen from there is whatever y'all want. (laughs) 
as far as what he wanted you to guys to do was just be an overhead scout going down the Triber Trail, you know, and you could zigzag back and forth, go a, a little bit up into the Cragmaw area, zigzag back down and check out the Sunless City or whatever. We still have to have a way to find him. and Well, he's taking an army up down the road, so you'll find him. You know? Well, I, I'm... And it would be especially be, from the air, yeah. It would be better if we didn't have to, like, fly back to him if we're like, there's an ambush! I, I get it. I mean, he's got his own scouts out. He's just wanting you guys to... You know, we don't know. Was there another big green flash part of the east that we didn't see? Hope not. Is there one way to the north along the coast? <laughs> not that you know of, no. Oh, I got disconnected. Same. Timeout. Can you cast? Client. Okay, there is a sending spell um, that allows for the 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 sending of a short message of twenty five words or less. Um, I could possibly learn the spell, and then I could possibly teach the spell also to, um, I guess my my cousin, and then my cousin could travel with the Skillion's army, and that would be a way for us to be able to have communication. Bear. It requires a third level spell slot. It does. <sighs> what level do you get third level spell slots? Fifth? If you're fifth a full caster? Fifth level for full casters. And since, I mean, hell, they're freaking cousins, they're very familiar with one another, so I think that could work. As far as detection, uh, I mean, rever rever reverse engineering, non-detect, the non-detection spell. What is that for? Because you, if you wanted to know their, where they were or whatever. Oh, I mean, I figured we could just talk. If we can talk to them, then we can find out where they are. And fly in that general direction. Yeah, we, we, we can talk to one another. Works for me. But it also like takes both of my mages out of going on the other adventure. <laughs> which they were designed to go on. <laughs> no! DM could just say there's a box of sending stones in that tower and we'd be done. <laughs> I stay at uh, that's what I was going for. I was hoping. <laughs> I don't mean to try and exclude your character, Brad. I hope you can see my... <laughs> yeah. I... Yeah, I... It's the, the nature of the beast, yeah. I believe. Exactly. We're, we're in a setting where... I don't feel like I could trust... I don't know. Maybe I'll just... put you in a cabin. Lock the door. Well, here I'll, I'll I'll post the pictures of both my characters, and you you tell me which one you, looks like they're more trusty. <laughs> oh, it has nothing to do with their looks. Hey, 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 hey! Now I want to see. I 
did your uncle just say LOL? I don't know. He's probably laughing at my untrustworthy, untrusting self. Oh, well, maybe. I guess that was ten minutes ago. I, I, I see a lot of your points. I think they're very justified. Oh, yeah. Sure. I just, I, I, I don't know that there's any choice we can make. But I also see how, you know, Esquilion came to his things and I see what he did too, you know? I mean, don't, yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I'm purely approaching this from Jekyll's point of view and Jekyll's feels, honestly, Jekyll feels like he was given this fake mission to leave the city so he wasn't there to intervene. He, he separated out of us and the Stormcrow's power at a time when he was going to make a political move. That's how it's, that's what Jekyll feels like. Have you ever met, you've never met Matt Street. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Nah, you've never met him. That looks like Matt Street. Yeah, they're, they're Alfred Byron. I love, I, I like the scribe faces. I actually really want that character to come with us. Because I like the, I wanted to play one. I literally was making a six-level character run with your cat, man. <laughs> I thought we were going to play the cat tonight. <laughs> And that's the one I wanted to play. <laughs> there you go. I'm scrolling through lots of pictures. Looks like you have a falcon for your familiar, not a devil. <laughs> you no, I, I, I helped another mage get a demon for a familiar. Exactly. It's, it looks like you landed on a falcon. Or oh, yeah, I, I'm going to use an owl because an owl is superior. Well, looks like you landed on an owl. It's a, it's a, it's a night falcon. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Exactly. Uncle Sean stomp his way inside yet, or... <laughs> no, I haven't seen him. Did a fire, magical fireball go off in there? That's Matt Street right there. Right there. Uh, there's my other character. So both mages. Their brother and sister? Oh, uh, cousins. I can't bring her on board a ship with this many crewmen. I don't well, let me, here, let me look up her charisma. Guys, but that's what she does. She she's a performer, man. She just has twelve charisma. She is an elf. She she's actually an elf. So our only full elf in the <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I think if you put him in the in the costume, he would look very similar. Right. I was trying to find he dressed up as a pirate in college. It helps that yeah. there are like no pictures he, of him on Facebook. He'd have to shave his beard like this dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he needs a little bit more facial hair. A little more grooming. Yeah, and I don't know how old that he doesn't use Facebook very much. Like and I clicked I, on photos of Matthew, and I can see pictures that I took of him in college. <laughs> like, like he's got like fifty pictures on Facebook. So yeah, I pictured Alfred as having like a ponytail. You know, he's got his hair pulled back and all. That. Yeah, yeah, Matt. And he's got his arcing spell hair, yeah. spell book right there on a holster. You know. 
<laughs> Indeed. And he's got his scroll that he can scribe, although I don't think you have that feature yet. I don't even know Not what it looks Not like in real life anymore. His most recent picture is from 2016. Anyway. And the, the elf's characters is Belina on that. Which she's actually a, um, basically a blade dancer. Well, you know, we'll, we'll take Alfred with us. We just, I'll role play around. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go check. I'm gonna go check on, check on. Sean. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. I, yeah. <laughs> 